three. We're live now. Boom! <laughs> What's up, John? How you doing? Hi, John. Uh, thanks for joining us. So today is myofascial release, um, otherwise known as pressure points or trigger points. Um, some acupressure techniques as well. Um, before we sort of dive into that today, I have three different kinds of balls that uh, you may have around the house. Uh, we have a lacrosse ball, a tennis ball, and a, um, this is actually designed for like uh, people with plantar fasciitis, so you like roll it on your foot. Um, they sell them at five below. I think I got this one from REI, but they're like five or six bucks. You can even get away with, um, if you've ever seen those like dryer, plastic dryer balls, you like throw them in the dryer and it like makes sure that your clothes are extra dry, um, but it basically looks the same. Um, the tennis ball is going to give you the most give, so it'll be the less, least painful. Uh, this is sort of medium and this is kind of like hardcore. Extreme. <laughs> yeah, he's going to be using this one. Nice. I'll give him the, I'll give him the lacrosse ball too, so his options. But um, yeah, so we'll be using um, whatever you have at home. Um, just make sure that if you're using um, like a softball might be too hard. So just make sure there's a little bit of give to what you have. Um, let's also demystify what myofascial release means. Um, so we refer to myofascial release as a vehicle for manipulating the mobility of your connective tissue. So um, myofascial comes from the word fascia and fascia is a connective tissue. Um, I like to explain it to my students with a little visual. So if you've ever um, cut, an, cut open an orange and peeled or peeled it, um, you'll notice that there's a white film in between the peel of the orange and the meat of the fruit. And that fil uh, film, that white film, is what holds the meat of the fruit together. It keeps it intact. It's the essentially connective tissue of the fruit. So you can think of our fascia in a similar way. It's, it's a, a filmy layer that holds our muscles together. And some people are born with more supple um, or more pliable fascia than others. As you age, your fascia um, will get more rigid. Um, additionally, if there are certain areas of your body that you don't use on a daily basis, those areas uh, will develop either uh, fibrosis, which is just a fancy way of saying scar tissue, or thickening of the fascia. So for example, if you have an office job and uh, then you come home and you sit on the couch and watch TV, you're basically um, sitting all day. The fascia responsible for, you know, moving your hip or bringing your knee all the way into your chest doesn't get used and that might thicken over time and limit your range of motion. So we want to think of flexibility in terms of muscles and also connective tissues such as your fascia, ligaments, and tendons. Um, so by applying pressure to the fascia, we're essentially um, releasing it in a way that allows the two layers of fascia to move. You have like a superficial layer and then a deeper layer and the pressure of the ball allows them to sort of slide over each other and sort of stimulate movement of the fascia again. Um, so like any other um, form of flexibility training that we do. We want to make sure we're never going into something hardcore, whether it's stretching or foam rolling or myofascial release without warming up or getting some fluid moving first. Otherwise, you might actually um, further contract the muscle, uh, which is the opposite of what we want to do. So um, we'll start in a seated position just to loosen everything up and we'll just make some circles with our shoulders, making sure to connect with your breathing. One more time, and then reverse the rotation. So a lot of people 
equates using things like the tennis ball and uh, to foam rolling, um, but foam rolling is actually not considered a form of myofascial release. It's, it's a little bit different in the way that it works, um, mostly because with myofascial release, you really need about two or three minutes of consistent pressure to get the desired effect, whereas in a foam roller, you're sort of moving all around uh, for about 30 seconds in each area, usually. Good, one more time. Roll the shoulders. So once we're done warming up, we'll basically be holding the poses for about three minutes. Reverse. And relax, good, roll your head. And this is gonna be a general full body release. Reverse. Very good. Interlace your hands behind your back, puff up your chest, elbows straight, deep breaths. Good, right hand to the left knee, gentle twist. And switch. Very good, back to center. Uh, bring your palms together and rub them. So you're getting like a little friction going. And you wanna just get Enough friction where you feel that your palms are getting warm. And then we're going to do a little self massage. So. Oh, like in Karate Kid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I'm using my two fingers and I'm just making little circles on my temple. And then reverse the circle. Good. And then move slightly upward towards the hairline. You'll feel there's some more sort of like soft membrane-y stuff going on there as well. Reverse. And then work your way down towards the ear. So we're still like in the temple area, but closer to the ear. Good. Um, I like to take the knuckle of my thumb for the jawline, but if that's too intense, you can continue with just your your finger pads. Um, but oh no. <laughs> oh no! Is it free? Yeah, it's frozen. I'll just wait. Now Yanni's definitely going to use the spiky ball for this. Anyways, um, so knuckles or finger pads, and you'll feel a cavity or a depression right underneath your cheekbone. And we're just going to go against the grain of the muscle all along the cavity underneath your cheekbone. Okay. <laughs> yeah, the pointy part of your knuckle. And you're kind of like digging underneath your cheekbone all the way out to the jawline. And then you can just go down the jawline. Make sure you're keeping your shoulders relaxed here. If you're tensing up your shoulders, then you're just creating more tension all the way to the chin. I, I like do this to myself all the time. <laughs> Good, and then relax, roll your shoulders. Um, we're gonna do the same thing with a slightly more tender area. Um, it's right in between where the jaw ends and the neck begins, right underneath your earlobe. It's a very tender area. So you might wanna go in first with your finger pads, one side at a time. And just relax your jaw, don't clench your teeth in. And there should be a 
fairly tight muscle right underneath your earlobe. Do you feel it, Yanni? Uh, I'm not sure if it's... <laughs> I feel like a bone. And it no, be... it's, it shouldn't be bone. It should be like um. Muscle. Yeah, like, oh, okay, like right here. Yeah, usually when I do it to people, like when I just press lightly, they're immediately like, that's too much. It gets really tense. Um, a lot of people with TMJ have super tender. I don't know exactly what this muscle is called. I'm sorry. And then once you found, you'll know when you find it. So once you find it, just sort of hold some pressure there with either your knuckle or your fingers and breathe. One more deep breath. Very good and relax, roll your shoulders. And relax the shoulder. So we'll reach for your ball. I'm gonna give you the lacrosse ball for uh -huh. this one. No, <laughs> no, no Corona um, ball yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're gonna take a neck stretch and just use the hand to pull the muscles in your neck taut. And then we're gonna come on top with the ball. So get a comfortable angle that you can hold with one hand and then use your dominant hand to place the ball right at the base of the skull on the side next to your ear. Okay, and you're using the palm of your hand to just apply, apply some pressure here and make little um, back and forth motions. Is that it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I like to keep my palm kind of straight so that oh, the ball can just roll, but whatever works for you guys. And we're keeping it fairly concentrated near the base of the skull. We'll work our way down to the base of the neck in a minute. And then bring it down to the middle of the neck. And we're only on one side. We're not touching the cervical spine with the ball at all. And then finally at the base of the neck, same thing, we're rolling up and down, side to side, avoiding um, the spine. And then relax, roll the shoulders, and we'll switch. You can turn your head, use your hand to pull, and then when you're ready, placing the ball at the base of the skull. Oops. Oopsies. I got caught in my hood actually. <laughs> fell out. I don't know if hoods are proper attire for yoga line. I know. Missed actually, I wasn't planning on wearing it, but it was cold because I was um. I was buying gum at Stop and Shop, and it was freezing. Oh. I didn't get any gum. <laughs> I have a lot of gum now. I buy you gum all the time. I know, I'm <laughs> Mostly because I Take steal it. all of Yanni's gum. I feel like I have to replace it. Good, bring it to the middle. And you can experiment with going along with the grain of your muscle or against it. And then we'll bring it to the base of the Oh, my shoulder's tired. Yeah, you have to keep your shoulder relaxed, otherwise you're gonna feel your your deltoids start burning. Um, so you can relax, ro roll your shoulders. This is considered self myofascial release. Uh, ideal situation is you're working with either a physical therapist or trainer or someone who's certified to do manual to you. So that manual myofascial release would be out of my scope of practice, but it's okay to do it um, to ourselves. Okay. Um, let's put the ball down for now. There's a muscle that we're going to do some self-massage to um, in, the, in the webbing of your hand. Okay, so 
another reason why it would be ideal if you had someone doing this to you because as you're massaging one hand, the muscles in the other hand will be tense. But we're just getting um, some basic knowledge of where those pressure or trigger points are. So um, the webbing in between your thumb and your first pointer finger, you should feel um, like some striations of muscle. So we're just gonna gently uh, go against those striations. I have my thumb on, on the palm side and my fingers on top of the hand. Also formerly known as the gamer muscle. So you're just sort of kneading that muscle. Um, for some of you, this might feel very tender. If you don't um, work with your hands a lot, you might not, it might be very pliable. We're just loosening it up. And make sure that you sort of work your way around the whole muscle. So get all the way down to where the thumb um, connects to the wrist. For me over there is kind of the closer yeah. to the thumb. Yep, for me as well. The deeper down I go, the, the more tender I feel. And sort of feel around for where your most tender spot is. And then we're gonna just hold and squeeze. So start lightly and then just gradually increase um, the amount of pressure that you have. And if your arms are getting tired, you can just rest them on your lap and breathe. Continue to increase the amount of pressure that you have. Um, there are a lot of practitioners in <clears throat> acupressure, acupuncture, Chinese medicine that um, claim that this point is linked to um, mitigating stomach issues, if you're feeling nauseous, if you have a migraine or a headache, um, squeezing this point is supposed to help. Squeezing and then relax. <laughs> Was it getting intense? Yeah. Um, so this entire class is not going to feel good, just so you know. Um, but it'll it's be. It's good for you. It's good for you, but it's going. It sh if it doesn't feel uncomfortable, you're probably not doing it right, or you haven't found that sweet spot yet. All right. So we'll just move on to the other side. <clears throat> this will probably be a little more intense if this is your dominant hand that you're now massaging. Um, I can already feel that this is more tender because I use my right hand more. Also, we just used it to massage our other hand, so it's probably a little tight. But a lot of times, <clears throat> I've had other people you know, just like squeeze it for me because I don't like having my other hand tense up while I'm squeezing my other hand. Okay, working your way all around the area, all the way down to the end of the webbing. Little circles, little pinches. And then once you've found your sweet spot, go ahead and hold and play around with where you're applying the pressure. Are you applying it from the thumb underneath or from on top with your index or pointer finger? Make sure you're breathing. That's gonna help you to keep the rest of your hand relaxed. Continue to apply pressure. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. One more deep breath, go as hard as you can. And then relax, you can, yeah, you can um, just shake your hands out. And then we'll take our ball to the floor and just roll the palm of the hand in the ball. I'm sort of um, going back and forth on the heel of my palm, on the thumb side, and I can feel a little popping of the muscle. And then we'll switch. All right, 
so now we're going to do a similar thing but with your feet and actually that's what this ball is designed for um, and it's obviously a little more intense because we have these spiky things on them so um, I'll show you with the tennis ball um, so basically we're gonna um, start at the heel of the foot and work our way towards the toes and this is something that if you have plantar fasciitis um, which is basically inflammation of the fascia in your foot um, this is something that really helps okay so we're starting at the heel and we're going back and forth straight up and down what's the for plantar fasciitis I I'm, I, I'm familiar with it but I forget what the exact um, symptom of that is it's basically discomfort in your foot um, yeah, because I feel I remember one time I... Let's bring it to the arch of the foot, up and down. I was having pain somewhere and someone thought it was that. Oh, really? There's also, like, there's a bunch of different, like, foot discomfort. Like, oh, another common one is heel spurs that people get that's more, like, towards the heel. But the plantar fasciitis could also be, um, like, people with low arches, including myself, like... They're more prone to it if you're more active. Yeah, um, I have fairly low arches. Yeah. And then you can go around in circles, making sure that you're um, paying attention to applying pressure to the inside of your foot as you make the circle. So um, for someone who has low arches, typically the inside or the instep collapses and creates pain, so you're constantly combat combating that. So if you suffer from the low arches, I re recommend finding a spot to um, concentrate on on the instep. Okay, and then once you found a spot that, that you feel is tender, place your hands, um, lean your weight back into them, and we're just gonna lift the hips slightly. Did you feel it in your foot? Oh yeah, on the inside. Yeah, um, I had it here. I'm gonna, we're gonna do it again, and I'm gonna put mine like right underneath the ball of my foot. So like the squishy part right on, like underneath mm, where the. Yeah, I feel that. Yeah, it's hard to explain. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna do it again. Imagine doing this with the spiky one. Mm, <laughs> nice. I love pain. <laughs> Good, lower it down, relax. And we'll switch sides. Okay, so we'll start at the heel and just go up and down. I'm actually getting hot now. to the arch, getting all the outstep and the instep. I'm just so uncoordinated in my left leg. <laughs> yeah, I know. This is, I have to like think about it more on this side. <laughs> <laughs> and then when you found the tender spot on your arch, it could be anywhere. Um, for this one, for me, it's more, um, on the instep but closer to my heel this time like you'll know it when you feel it okay so then when you're ready go ahead and elevate your hips and really push down into um, the ball deep breaths <laughs> Good. Um, go ahead and roll that out, and then when you're ready, feel around for that tender spot right underneath the ball of your foot. This would be a soft spot, and then go ahead and lift. <laughs> Good, relax. 
Okay, so now we're gonna take the legs into a 90-90. And we're gonna do some calf and anterior tibialis work. So the anterior tibialis is sort of like your shin splint muscle. When you get a shin splint, that's the area that you would feel it. So it's the outside edge of the uh, shin, okay? So we'll take the ball, uh, the ball um, closest to the knee, not directly on the tibia, um, but on the meaty part on the side, okay? And same thing, we're gonna lift the hips and put pressure on that area and just move back and forth a little bit. This is weird. Really? I feel like... Am I too high? Hold on. Right here? Or... It should be... I always forget that Yanni can't like see me straight on like everyone else. Ah. So right here, it's like the meaty part right underneath the knee. Something just broke. <laughs> and again, you should not be rolling this across your bone, just like our one and a half inch back and forth. I feel like you still don't have it in the right place. Yeah. <laughs> Move it like forward a little more. Here? No. Higher? It's hard to tell because you have loose pants on. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Here? Wait, because right here is like touching a bone. Oh no, that's not it then. Like here is my calf. <laughs> right that muscle. Right there? Yeah. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. Now I gotta get closer. And then we'll start working it down the leg towards the ankle from there. So staying on that track, um, I'm kind of just moving my shin forward and back. I don't know if I'm doing this. Yeah, that, that, that's it. As long as it's actually on the, that muscle. I do this one all the time too. Good, and then find a tender area in the middle of the shin and we'll hold. Again, you should not feel any ball on bone here, it should all be in the meaty part on the outside of your shin. You can also, when you flex and point your toe, you'll feel um, the muscle rolling over the ball, or you should. the hips um, in this area you might not even have to raise your hips if you're if you're just like um, you want that extra pressure you can but um, you can get away with not raising the hips for this one if you like so you can go ahead and roll the ball so you find that um, find that sensitive spot and this is important because the anterior tibialis is not something that we often get the opportunity to stretch. Um, when we do our runner stretch and we point the toe, we get a little bit of a stretch uh, in the bottom part of the, the muscle, but some muscles like this one is where the myofascial release really comes in handy. And once you've found that lower uh, tender spot, we'll hold it again. And then you can, you can flex and move the ankle around and see how it feels. We're still warming up. And then relax, good. 
Then we'll switch our 90-90. And again, just to show you, we're, we're looking for this sort of meaty, meaty part of, this is the insertion point. So we want to start there. Okay. And then um, go ahead and lift the hips and hold. I, I like rocking back and forth over the muscle, but it's up to you, whatever you can comfortably tolerate. Hurts? No, I just felt like a lot of like rolling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, ideally, um, this works the best when you have um, bare skin on the ball. Um, but, you know, if you have tighter clothes, that helps. Um, so we'll move it toward the center of the shin and you can keep your hips on the floor for this if you'd like, or you can raise it up as well. And we're just moving the knee um, from side to side here, keeping it on that 90-90 track. should be like right alongside your shin bone but not on the shin bone. Ooh. And then relax. You can roll your wrists out if you're getting tired. And then we'll finish up the anterior tibialis with the um, the lower part of your, of your shin. And again, you can flex and point. So we don't really often think about the flexibility of, of the fascia. Um, and I forget how many years it, they say it takes for your body to completely make new cells. What? Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know. It's like after a certain amount of years, all the cells in your body are completely different than they were, like, say, seven mm -hmm. years ago. Um, and so you can relax. And we'll just shake the legs out straight and lean forward. So... Um, going back to the example of a person who works an office job and then comes home and sits maybe at their computer or on the couch watching TV, um, if there are certain muscle groups or connective tissue that's not being used over an extended period of time, when those cells regenerate, it's much easier for the body to focus energy on the things that you do use or move on a daily basis. So. Um, the areas where you're more stagnant, the fascia will begin to thicken over time or even scar over. So um, the phrase, you know, if you, you lose it, you use it or you lose it. Mm. Use it or lose it. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're taking our ball again, and we're going to do the calf. Um, so the calf will start closest to the knee and work our way down to the foot. So I'm placing this not in the knee pit, but right underneath on the top of the calf. I'm going to move back a little bit. All right, so now um, you're going to make a figure four with the other foot. And just lean your weight back into the hands and elevate your, your heel. And then begin to turn your toes from side to side a little bit. And then when 
and you found um, a good foundation um, to sort of hold, find, find, find that tender spot, and we'll elevate the hips. All right, so when you're ready, hold it up. One more deep breath here. And then relax, roll yourself back so that the ball um, is in the, the belly of the muscle, the meat of the calf. And um, when we do this pressure on the calf, it's important to know that there are different groups of muscles within your calf. So you have um, you have the, the gastric meniscus muscle, it's got, you know, meat on the side, in the center, and then there's the soleus, which connects from the heel to the, the meaty part of your calf. So we're going to target all of those. So now we're in the very center of the back of your calf. And you can sort of, you know, swivel around, find, find that area that's super tender. You can rock back and forth a little bit. Has has muscular calves. <laughs> I just beg. He's got a lot to uh to roll out here. <laughs> Imagine Joe's calf doing. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like it wouldn't even. <laughs> Good, and then find your area, and let's lift up. This one should be a little bit more tender. Should my heel be on the floor? Or are you lifting your heel? Um, my heel is lifting, but it's okay if you're posting with your heel for sure. So I don't, can't hold myself. <laughs> and then relax. Good. Let's move it down towards the soleus. So just scooch it down a little bit more. And this one is a little bit harder to hold in place. So um, just keep your hips on the floor first and just sort of um roll the ball around make sure you keep it sort of on the center track here and then find a place where you feel like you can maintain Having trouble balancing, you can keep your heel on the floor. And then relax. Good. Switch. <clears throat> okay, so we're bringing it right underneath the knee pit. And I, I do the figure four to bring all of the pressure into that calf. If it's too much, you can post the knee like this instead, and that'll also give you a little bit more um, balance if you need it. All right, so we're here, and we're just rolling at first to find that sweet spot. And then when you found it, you can elevate the hips. Breathing deep. And relax, roll the ball to the center of the calf. The belly of the beast. The belly, yes. And just rolling. You might not even need for this middle one to bring the hips up. Like you might be feeling it just as this is. When you change the angle that your toes are facing, it changes um, the pressure. And then when you found a good spot, we'll lift the hips up. Unless if you're feeling it enough, you can just continue to hold. And 
and finally we'll move it down to the soleus. Okay, we can roll it um, forward and back. And then when you found your spot, we'll pick it up, or you can just hold. Ready up. Make sure you're breathing. Um, and just like our neck stretch routine, um, where we were using the tennis balls, it's always important to hydrate afterwards. You can relax um, because essentially we're pushing out lactic acid from the muscle and dehydrating the muscle. So we want to make sure that doesn't get reabsorbed um, and also rehydrate our muscles. T Tyler said you're more jacked than men now. Oh. <laughs> 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 I have been working on my arms. But it's <laughs> I feel like it's so stupid because I have like a farmer's tan now. <laughs> um, what were we doing? What were we doing next? Tyler distracted me. Oh yeah, so now we're gonna do the inside of the calf, which is uh, gonna require us to go onto the belly. So um, I'll show you first and then we'll do it together. So we're gonna stay in this position for the inside of the calf and the inner thigh. Okay, so we're gonna start at the inner thigh um, and we're placing it right underneath the knee to start on the inner thigh. Okay, so just holding here might be enough for you. You can roll. Find, find the tender spot and then just relax. You can make a little pillow for your head, whatever is going to help you, you know, get through this. If you want to increase the intensity of the pressure, you can raise your foot off the floor. Uh, you don't have to raise it very high. You can also experiment with flexing the knee any amount. You just move the heel back and forth. We're just encouraging movement of the fascia. Come on, fascia. <laughs> it's motivational. <laughs> you got this. Deep breaths. So similar to um, acupressure and myofascial release, there's another cool little trick um, for speeding up the progress of your flexibility. So, um, you know, Adding mobility to your fascia is one way to speed up or supplement your regular flexibility training. And then there's something else um, that we'll do next week called um, NPF, Neuromuscular Proprioceptive uh, Facilitation. And it's basically tense and release. And it basically is a tense and release uh, format that tricks your your receptors into thinking you're more flexible than you are and it does help speed up your your flexibility so um, next week's class will be a combination of NPF tense and release and um, we'll also be doing a guided meditation so I'm excited mm. excited about that a guided relaxation so it'll be half and half and one more deep breath here Okay, and then you can um, just move the ball down to the inside of the calf on the middle. And if you roll 
the ball up and down by just moving your knee up and down. Um, you'll find that sweet spot. Do you, do you know what you're doing next week for the stream? I haven't decided yet. Um, we're probably we're working on some top stuff, so maybe something from bottom. But mm -hmm. do people ever like request topics from for the stream? They could, but they usually don't. They don't. Uh, try to figure something that we haven't covered yet. We haven't done the lasso series yet, right? Oh, the that's lasso true. defense series. Defense or uh, defense. So it's passing. Oh yes, passing the lasso. Yeah. yeah. I feel like that's the only one I've I've seen us do in regular class. Cause we don't we don't do too much lasso attacks, right? Yeah, we we could do a little bit of both. That'd be fun. Good. Go ahead and relax, and we will switch right away. So, right underneath the knee. I'm doing the other leg, right? Uh-huh. <laughs> Tyler says he plays last time, but he... Does he not, really? That he sucks at it. That's what he said. Stick to your Kamoras, Tyler. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> then you should watch our stream. <laughs> you should watch our stream. <laughs> Yeah, Tyler's uh, stream attendance has been yeah has been uh, pretty impressive. Yeah, I'm excited to do the um, the guided meditation next class, um, especially after listening to um, the latest podcast with Roberto Jimenez, um, mm. the to the, to the Death podcast. Uh, Roberto talks about how he uses meditation to help him prepare for tournaments. And um, for some people, they may not know how to implement it or how it could be beneficial. So providing you with a template can help and then you can sort of mm. make it your own as you get more familiar with it more deep breaths here I feel like I've only meditated like a few times in my life yeah and there are so many different ways to meditate too that it can be overwhelming to to decide how to how to pick one to start let's move it to the calf and we're rolling the knee up and down You can either keep rolling it or you can find the spot to sort of hold and relax into. deep breath good from here we're going to turn on to your side and this may be more painful but we're, we're doing the outer hip so the meaty part of the side of your hip um, you definitely do not want any bone on bone here so um, just take a second to lean onto um, your hip and make sure that there's no ball on bone touching now we're not necessarily on the glute at all we're on the side the side of the glute and then you can roll a little bit until you find that sweet spot that's tender 
<laughs> Are you okay, Yanni? Yeah, I'm okay. Are you sure? This is one of my common ones that I do on my own. Oh, good, good. Uh, and then once you found it, you can relax into it. This is an important one. I, I learned this one time uh, with the chiropractor I used to go to. And he told me that I could do it on my own. Yeah. And it, at the time, I was having a lot of lower back pain, and it helped. In fact, if I didn't do this before lying down, I wouldn't be able to sleep. <laughs> oh, my God. Is that when you had the piriformis thing? or? No, but I was used to doing it doing then. Doing it then, too. This yeah. is years ago, like I see. five, six years ago. Beating your weight into the ball. And then from here, we're going to transition right into the glute. So we'll start by rolling the ball right to the center of the glute. And then you can just begin by making little circles and feeling for where. The tenderness is it, it for some people it's more towards the top of the glute and it might even feel a little bit ticklish um, so we're not actually touching the the sacral bone right we're just dealing with the meaty part here but feel around for where you really need to sink that tension into and then hold And then if you want to, you can play with the angle of your leg. So if you bring your leg out to the side, it's going to give you slightly different tension. One more deep breath. From here, we'll roll onto the other glute, center of the glute. And just make little circles. And then when you found your spot, go ahead and relax into it, sink into the ball, play around with the angle of your leg. throws this thing around my room. <laughs> Some cats can't get corona, so. <laughs> Hopefully not. You never know. One more deep breath. I thought they can. I don't know. I don't know. I've heard you both. I don't know what to believe. And then we'll um, roll onto your, your other hip now. So again, no bone on bone, uh, ball on bone here. And then just relax the rest of your body and allow gravity to um, stimulate the fascia. I was watching a video of that riddle video, the science one. Uh huh. Where they talked about what if Earth was twice as big? <laughs> Very interesting. <laughs> What is? Then so the gravity would be twice as strong. Yeah. Wow. It would be a lot smaller or something because we wouldn't be able to get the move around as much. What well, what YouTuber was this? Riddle. Oh, I don't know that. It's the one I said I showed you that one. But the quantum physics. Yeah. Oh my God. Yanni's been on a rabbit hole of scientific YouTube videos during quarantine. 
all sorts of videos, but that this one, I like Riddle. <laughs> Have you guys ever seen Riddle on YouTube? It's pretty cool. Tyler, you better be doing these. Come on, Tyler. Come on, Tyler. <laughs> I keep breathing. And then relax. Get rolling onto your stomach. You're going to um, apply some pressure to your pec muscles. Um, this honestly is, in my opinion, more effective when you do it up against the wall because you can manipulate how much pressure you're putting a little better than when you're on the floor. But we're here. So um, you're placing the ball. And again, if you can. You might have to place it under your shirt so that it doesn't slip or so that you have the most um, contact and you can either make a fist or make a little pillow for your forehead and just allow the ball to sink into the pack. You can play around with your hand placement. You can move your arm around and see what feels best for you. For me, I have it right underneath my collarbone um, on my frontal deltoid, so right in front of my shoulder where my shoulder connects to my chest muscle. But whatever is most tender for you. It's also important to keep in mind that um, stiff, thick, or fibrotic fascia didn't happen overnight. It happened over a course of months or years. So um, consistency with the myofascial release is going to be key to um, permanent mobility or permanent progress. So not to say that this is... Um, super temporary relief because it is considered more temporary than for example foam rolling um, but consistency will help maintain uh, your fascia and then go ahead and roll the ball to the opposite side of your chest Play around with your arm movement, see what feels good before you commit to that pressure point. Doesn't this feel nice, Yanni? Yeah, yeah. this is a tough one. <laughs> but yeah, it's good. Yanni. YouTube thinks it's, we're just videotaping us sleeping. I know. <laughs> it's like, why are they doing this? They're going to get kicked off. And if you want more of a challenge, you can apply pressure with either your forearm or your palm to really sink all of your weight onto that opposite oh, yeah. shoulder. This is clearly optional. You might not even need to do this to be feeling it. And then if you really wanted to, to increase the pressure, you could bend your far side knee and get a little scorpion action, bringing your toes toward the opposite side. I'm gonna do that on the opposite just side just so that I'm symmetrical. Um, so if you did that, do it on the other side real quick. Oh, I forgot to mention that on this side. Mm. 
Make sure that you're breathing deeply. And then relax. Very good. You can remove the ball. And we'll come up to a seated position. All right. So um, remember to drink lots of water immediately after this session. Um, and repeat it on a regular basis to get the best the best results and I'm excited to sort of take you guys through sort of the mental side of things next week and some NPF tensin release to continue supplementing your flexibility program. Excellent. Thanks for watching. Thank you very much. <laughs>